Caroline Glick, thanks for joining us on Jerusalem Dateline. What's your initial thoughts about the new foreign policy team for Biden and the Biden administration in general? Well, I mean, the new foreign policy team is very familiar because it was uh, it was Obama's foreign policy team. It's the exact same people, and they're in very similar positions uh, in the Biden administration. And um, they're really picking up where Obama left off. They're doing everything that they can to cancel the last four years of the Trump administration, not only at home in the United States, but also here in the, in, in the Middle East. And we see this first and foremost, most directly with their policies towards Iran and its nuclear weapons program and its operation, regional aggression, particularly in Yemen. What's your main concern about the, uh, the their approach to the Iranian nuclear deal? The nuclear deal with Iran was pegged as a as a non-proliferation agreement. Obama himself said that at the end of the lifespan of the nuclear deal, and it was scheduled to end somewhere between 2025 and 2028, that Iran's breakout time to independent nuclear military capabilities was going to be zero. The Iran nuclear deal didn't stop Iran from getting nuclear capabilities to build nuclear weapons. It enabled them to do so, and it legitimized their efforts to do so. And aside from that, the sanctions that the JCPOA, the uh, Iran nuclear deal, gave to Iran enabled them to fund their regional aggression, their sponsorship of terrorism globally, and their proxy wars in Yemen and Iraq and Syria and Lebanon and Gaza. The Obama administration's Iran policy was to empower Iran and to do so against you, America's traditional allies, the Arab states in the Gulf, Egypt and, and Israel. By reinstating them now and doing so, you know, with all of the energy and and focus that they can muster. President Biden himself at the top and his team are pushing on with that policy. And uh, as a consequence, they're facilitating Iran's rise as a nuclear power and as a regional hegemon. Iran's intelligence minister gave a veiled threat that they can actually go ahead and get a nuclear weapon. How would you describe the current state of affairs between Israel, Iran, and the U.S. in terms of their nuclear program? Well, I think that Iran recognizes that the United States has said, fine, do whatever you want, and we'll support that. Now, Biden made this seemingly hardball statement in his interview with Nora O'Donnell from CBS News over the weekend, where he said that the United States wasn't going to end its economic sanctions on Iran until Iran scales back its nuclear activities to come into line with the limitations they accepted in the, in the nuclear deal. But really, that was not true. It was already reported that the administration is seeking different ways, aside from ending the economic sanctions, to give money to Iran. So one of the things that they're working on now is to get the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, to make a large loan to Iran that the United States would back even as Iran is actively breaching its commitments under the nuclear deal and, again, taking steps, making advances in its nuclear capabilities that bring it really to the door of independent nuclear military capabilities. So what we're talking about here is that Biden is playing with Iran about their nuclear program. The Iranians recognize this. And as to Israel in this mix, I mean, I think the chief of staff of the IDF, Aviv Kohavi, gave a speech last month that he's given orders to the IDF, the Israel Defense Forces Operational Command, to prepare plans to strike Iran's nuclear installations. And obviously that those are going to be contingent on receiving the approval of Prime Minister Netanyahu. And a lot of the commentary about the statement was saying that he was trying to deter Iran or that uh, say, hey, look, you better not do this or we're going to come get your nuclear site. Or even trying to signal to the Biden administration that Israel wasn't party to their appeasement efforts. But I think that given the pace of uh, Iran's nuclear progress and their enriching uranium to 20% in two sites by using advanced centrifuges. Last week, they tested a rocket in low orbit that can just as easily be used as an intercontinental ballistic missile that's capable of reaching Britain. They're producing uh, uranium metals. All of these things are things that you do in order to uh, to, to put together nuclear warheads along the lines that the uh, Iranian minister was talking about in his television interview. Um, so I think that it's probably more likely that Kohavi was telegraphing a message to two different parties. One is the Israeli public, that we have to be aware that war is, is approaching, at least since Biden came in. And the other target audience, I think, were Israel's allies in the Persian Gulf, the UAE, Bahrain, and uh, less publicly, but very significantly, Saudi Arabia. Well, Caroline Glick, thanks for your uh, insight analysis and uh, for being here with uh, Jerusalem Dateline. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you and all of your viewers. Thank you for your support for Israel.